Good afternoon to all of you. I have an opening statement to make. I'll read the statement and then I'll take questions. I believe the statement has been distributed. I'm glad to speak to you exactly 106 days after I last spoke to you. As I stepped out and breathed the air of freedom at 8 p.m. last night, my first thought and prayers were for the 75 lakh people of the Kashmir Valley who have been denied their basic freedoms since August 4, 2019. I am particularly concerned about the political leaders who have been detained without charges. Freedom is indivisible. If we must preserve our freedom, we must fight for their freedom. If we must preserve our freedom, we must fight for their freedom. I am grateful for the clear and comprehensive order yesterday of the Supreme Court. The order will clear the many layers of dust that have unfortunately settled on our understanding of criminal law and the manner in which criminal law has been administered by our courts. I have never commented on cases that are sub judice and I shall continue to adhere to that principle. To many of your possible questions on the case, the answers can be found in the lucid order of the Supreme Court pronounced yesterday. In the last 106 days, I was strong in spirit and I become stronger because of the following. One, my record as minister and my conscience are absolutely clear. Officers who have worked with me, business persons who have interacted with me, and journalists who have observed me know that very well. Two, my family trusts in God. Three, we have total confidence that the courts will ultimately render justice. Let us leave the matter at that and turn to the most pressing and explosive issue of the day, which is the state of the economy. The place to start is diagnosis. If the diagnosis is wrong, the prescription will be useless, maybe even fatal. Even after seven months into the fiscal year, the BJP government believes that the problems faced by the economy are cyclical. The government is wrong. Let me repeat that. The government is wrong. It is wrong because it is clueless. It is unable to look for the obvious clues because it is stubborn and mulish in defending its catastrophic mistakes like demonetization, flawed GST, tax terrorism, regulatory overkill, protectionism, and centralized control of decision-making in the Prime Minister's office. Please reflect on each one of the charges that I've made. In the days to come, I shall speak, give interviews, and write elaborately on each one of them. Nothing sums up the state of the economy better than the following series of numbers. Eight, seven, 6.6, 5.8, 5, and 4.5. Those are the quarterly growth rates of GDP in the last six quarters. According to the BJP government, these signify Ache Din. 8 to 7 to 6.6 to 5.8 to 5 and 4.5 is Ache Din. The third and fourth quarters of 2019-20 are not likely to be any better. We will be lucky to end the year if growth touches 5%. And please remember Dr. Arvind Subramanian's caution that 5% under this government because of suspect methodology, because of suspect methodology is not really 5% but less by about 1.5%. The Prime Minister has been unusually silent on the economy. 
he has left it to his ministers to indulge in bluff and bluster. The net result, as economists put it, is that the government has turned out to be an incompetent manager of the economy. Those are the words of the economists. Incompetent managers. The investors of the world and the bankers, the rating agencies, and the boards of directors of companies read The Economist, The Wall Street Journal, and Time. They also pay close attention to numbers. Every number, and I repeat, every number points in the direction of a floundering economy. I don't want to overload you with numbers. Here are some numbers. IIP, 4.6 to 4.4. To 3.9 to 2.4. Credit growth to MSME 0 0.9 minus 0 0.4, 2.3, 2.7. Manufacturing minus 1.2, 1.7, minus 1.4, minus 0 0.7. Core sector 4.8, 4.3, 4.4. Zero point two. Unemployment nine point six five per cent, four point zero three, five point one four, seven point zero three. There are many more. You have reported many of them. Just go back and look at your data. The government alone is in denial. Rural consumption is down according to the NSSO. Rural wages are down. Producer prices are down, especially for farmers. Daily wage earners get work for no more than 15 days a month. Demand for mug and rega is up. Fast-moving consumer goods, both durable and non-durable, are selling less. Wholesale prices are up. CPI is going up. Onions sell at rupees 100 a kg. Of course, the finance minister, of course, does not eat onions. What do these point to? There is less demand among the people because they have less money and less appetite to consume due to uncertainty and fear. Today, for the first time, the Reserve Bank of India, in a matter of seven months, has reduced its forecast from the original 7.4 that was made in February 2019, reduced to 7.2 in April 2019, reduced to 6.1, I think a month ago, and today reduced to 5. I cannot recall an instance where between February 2019 and December 2019, the Reserve Bank of India reduced its forecast from 7.4 to 5. This is unprecedented. Either the Reserve Bank was completely incompetent in making its first assessment in February 2019, or the government has been extremely incompetent in managing the economy in the last eight months. Unless demand increases, there will not be increased production or output or increased investment. Plant load factor of all thermal plants is 48%. What does that mean? If one half of installed electricity capacity shut down, there can be no greater disaster. One half of your installed electricity capacity today is shut down. We are not producing electricity because there is no consumption of electricity. There is no consumption of electricity because nobody wants to produce any goods. One half of your electricity capacity is shut down. Government is calling the present slowdown cyclical. Thank God they have not called it seasonal. It is structural. And the government has no solutions or reforms that would address the structural problems. I'm not even sure they understand the difference between cyclical and structural. The UPA lifted 140 million people out of poverty between 2004 and 2014. The NDA has, since demonetization in 2016, pushed millions of people 
below the poverty line. The economy can be brought out of the slowdown, but this government is incapable of doing that. The economy can be brought out of the slowdown, but this government is incapable of doing that. We think that the Congress has the ideas, but nobody will listen to us. I believe that the Congress and some other parties are better equipped to pull the economy out of the slowdown and push economic growth. But I'm afraid, my friends, we have to wait for better times. Yes, questions? Yes, who's going moderating? Please, he will moderate. Yes, Supriya. Please keep quiet here, there's five or six of you, please. Yes. The Bharat Petroleum is a scandal. Mr. Jairam Ramesh has already pointed it out some months ago. This buying, asking one PSU to buy another PSU is an accounting maneuvering. Government's coffers are filled. That doesn't make any difference to the organization or the company or the economy. Let us see who buys BPCL. That will give you the clue about where the scandal lies. Anand. What? This question should be put to the Prime Minister, but you will not get an answer there either. If the Prime Minister will not answer your question, how can I answer your question? Global slowdown is responsible to the extent that it affects our exports. But exports are only one of the four drivers of the economy. The other three are entirely the responsibility of the Indian government. Sanjeev ji. Uh, sir, to your attention to the onion crisis. You've been sarcastic about the finance minister. I didn't. I was not sarcastic. I was quoting her. Of course, of course, they should have planned in advance. What's the point of uh, importing now? When will they arrive? But if the finance minister says, I don't eat onions, that shows the mindset of this government. Siddharth. You eat onion eating people. I don't eat onions. Siddharth. I've said it. I don't think they understand even the difference between cyclical and structural. First, they must have people in the government who understand the difference between cyclical and structural. They had a few people. They banished them. Dr. Raghuram Raban was banished, Rajan. Dr. Arvind Subramanian was banished. Dr. Arvind Panagriya was ba banished. Dr. Urjit Patel was banished. People who understood these things were banished by this government. Sir, so that is what, uh, BJP MP uh, in the Lok Sabha simply made a statement saying that uh, GDP only gave into being in 1934 and is going to soon turn redundant. It is no uh, holy grail to go by. What do you make of this statement? I've already answered it. GDP is irrelevant. Protectionism is good. Personal income tax must be cut. Customs duty must be increased. This is the way to make India strong. This is BJP's ideas of reforms. If these are the BJP's ideas of reforms, God save this country. Aditi. Please, please, please. You have to go by the moderator, please.
I was told, you can verify this from the party leaders, I was told that the Congress party will oppose the bill. Asim, please listen to the moderator. You search your heart. Is there not fear today? Every businessman who spoke to economist for that special report said, don't quote my name. Rahul Bajaj is tall enough to say that at a meeting. But there's complete fear everywhere. Every institution is gripped by fear. And the media is no exception. I'm sorry to say this. The media is no exception. You are gripped by fear. Please shed fear. Please speak the truth to power. That is the least that the people of India expect. We buy your newspaper. We subscribe to your channel. We want you to speak truth to power. Sir, uh, sir, uh, please go by the moderator, please. What's he saying? What's he saying? My favorite poet, Saint Thiruvalluvar, said 2,300 years ago, Inna seidarkum iniyave seyakal yenna payatodo salbu. He also said, Inna seidari urutthal avarnana nannayam seyidhubita. Those who do wrong or evil to you, do good to them. We will not practice vendetta politics. I can only speak for myself. We will not practice vendetta politics. Who practices vendetta politics is for you to decide. Palvi. Palvi. I am a better man. What she means is, there's a very severe storm blowing across the coast. Millions of trees have fallen down. Millions of houses have been destroyed. Hundreds of people have killed. It is only a storm. It's not a tsunami. Does she want a tsunami? Does she want a recession? Who said it's a recession? We all understand the technical definition of recession. If she wants to educators on the technical decision or definition of recession, we will be happy to be educated. We are saying this slowdown is unacceptable. It is a man-made catastrophe and the men and women responsible for this catastrophe must bear responsibility. Jayendra. You please guarantee to me that the government will invite us and listen to us, then we will give them the advice. You please guarantee to me first that. You talk to them and come back to me. I'll give you my mobile number. Say that they will invite you. We will give them the advice. Uh, Archis. Narrative about the economy. Just talk to people. Go to the Mondays. Go to housewives. I've got a long email today from a fairly well-to-do lady who runs a business. The business has been shut down. And she sent me an email why the business was shut down. 
Now, this is not a shopkeeper or a street vendor. This is a fairly well-to-do lady who runs a fairly successful business. Shut down. She tells you why. Please talk to them. Even better, spend a few days where I was and you will know what is the position in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Orissa. On another occasion. I've already answered that, ma'am. You were not here, perhaps. Yes, please. Unprecedented that the RBI has reduced it from 7.4 to 5 in a matter of 8 9 months. Unprecedented. Yes, Kara. Can I ask you a question about Kashmir? Do you think in jail 100 more days and hundreds of Kashmiris in jails in North of India without a due process? What do you say about that? That's my first paragraph. My first paragraph of my statement today is. As I breathe the air of freedom, my first thoughts and prayers were for the 75 lakh people of the Kashmir Valley who have been denied their basic freedoms since August 4. I am particularly concerned about the political leaders who have been detained without charges. Freedom is indivisible. If we must preserve our freedom, we must fight for their freedom. I, I intend to visit Jammu and Kashmir if the government will allow me to visit Jammu and Kashmir. Please listen to the moderator. Yes, yes. Why do they want to follow our legacy? They are wiser people. They are more intelligent. They have got a bigger mandate. Why do they want to follow our legacy? Is it because they can't create their own legacy? The legacy is what they will leave behind. And what they are leaving behind is an economy in ruins. Yes, please. Yes, but not for today. That's for another day. Yes. Yes, sir. I've said the same thing. There is no demand today. People don't want to buy because they have less money and they're less confidence about the future. It's a well-established behavioral fact that when you have less money and you are less confident about the future, you buy less, you spend less. Listen to him, please. If the government believes that the Gandhis don't require SPG protection, that's a cross that the government has to bear. Let me make that very clear. If the government believes that the Gandhis do not require or deserve SPG protection, that is a cross the government has to bear. But the Gandhis have been extremely graceful and said, fine, if that's your decision, so be it. Anurag. There is a definitional problem. Is it 5 trillion in nominal terms or is it 5 trillion in the exchange rate terms? So leave that definitional problem out. Yes, sir. Day before yesterday, Dr. C. Rangarajan, former governor, Reserve Bank, former chairman, Economic Advisory Council, has said it will take us eight years at the current rate of growth to achieve five trillion. So let the MOS finance. Please invite Dr. Rangarajan. Please give them your channel or paper. Let them debate it. Let the MOS finance debate Dr. Rangarajan.
Una, una. I'm shocked. I'm ashamed. Yesterday, in one newspaper, I found six incidents of rape and lynching. In one paper, on one day, six incidents of rape and lynching. Shameful. Shameful that a section of our people think that they can get away with these acts of impunity. It's a complete breakdown of law and order in many parts of India. What is the police doing? Where is the fear of law? Sanjay. Shameful. It's not so confusing as you.